Monday, which means it's time for our weekly box office report brought to you by our friends at AMC <laughs> Theaters. Everybody in shop board's like, thanks, John, for spoiling Miss Universe. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Oh, Spoiler That's alert. really great. Right, you nerds are crazy. <laughs> he just spoiled it. For right. the second time this year, the all-time opening weekend box office record has been broken. Earlier this year, Jurassic World beat out the first Avengers movie by making $208 million. Now, Star Wars The Force Awakens has beaten that by $30 million dollars taking in just over 238 million coming in a distant second place is the new alvin and the chipmunks movie making 14.4 million dollars in third spot is the new tina fey amy polar comedy sisters which made 13.4 million dollars in fourth spot is the hunger games mocking jay part two being knocked out of the number one spot for the first time in five weeks and making an additional 5.6 million and a worldwide total of 595 million dollars rounding out the top five is the seventh film in the rocky franchise Creed making just over $5 million. Schnepp, what stands out to you about this week's box office report? Oh, I don't know. Maybe Star Wars <laughs> The Force Awakens stands out. Um, yeah, 238. Uh, there's, now they're saying it's not official yet, but it's maybe going to be 247. There's, yeah, they're speculating. There's some speculation right now that the numbers could get adjusted. Right. So like the Hollywood Reporter right now is saying 247 uh, and other people picking up and that we're sticking for now we're sticking with the 238 because the 238 number is what is still right, right now the official number that's official but by by this afternoon by the time the show ends they might adjust that up to 245 247 two, we'll have to keep our eye on it as of right now the official number is still 238 but i think uh the other things that stand up aside from that and also my prediction being very almost spot on um is uh sisters and and the road chip or whatever the thing's called. I think it's called road chip, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That they actually made a fourteen million each. That's surprising. I mean, I think that's spillover. That's it's counter absolute spillover. that's counter yeah. programming spillover. where you went to the theater thinking that you can actually get into this sold out movie and you brought your family and you couldn't get in, so you had two other movies to pick from. You had the Chipmunk movie or the the Tina Fey Amy Poehler movie. So that's why it's so even too. It's so weirdly even. It's like they're less than one million dollars yeah, apart. It's just like that just spillover. So I mean, that, that stands out to me, and it's, it's cool to see Creed hanging in there. I mean, but honestly, the Star Wars news is the biggest news. It's the biggest opening ever in Christmas, and in, in I guess it's history now, History. Right? Yeah. Biggest, biggest opening in history, and, and like you're right. Honestly, here's the thing. It's going to sound weird to say, but the biggest shock to me and surprise is Alvin and the Chipmunks and Sisters, because I'm not surprised at all by the Star Wars numbers. The fact, I If you had told me they both would have made... 14 plus, yeah. like 28, I would have said you're dreaming. I would have, like, I still thought it was a good idea. You remember back when they first announced that Alvin and the Chipmunks moved would be up, released, yeah. moved up to it. I said, hey, actually, that might not be a bad idea, mm -hmm. but I still didn't think it would crack 10. So that's impressive. But really, look, the story here is Star Wars The Force Awakens. Um, whether it's 238, whether it's 240, 247, 250, whatever, we are talking about shattering a record. When Jurassic World came along, it beat the previous record, the the original Avengers, by one million bucks. Beat it by one million bucks. As of right now, the new record beat it by thirty-seven million bucks, and maybe up to like forty-six million bucks or, or forty-something million bucks that it beat it by, which is just crazy numbers. Also, it broke the worldwide opening weekend record. But think about this: it broke the worldwide opening week re record without opening in China yet. It no. still has to open in China. Like when Jurassic World opened and it was like the biggest opening week uh, worldwide, it had China also. This is why, and you know, sometimes people ask, John, how come when you guys do box office reports, you only talk about the North American box office, you don't talk worldwide? Because they open in different markets at different times. You mm -hmm. can only compare worldwide opening weekend numbers if all the movies are opening in the same number of markets at the same time, and they're not. So all we really have to go on is you know, the domestic box office, and that's why when we do box office reports, we do that. But it broke the international, the world, not the international record, the worldwide record without China. Right. Imagine how much it would have beat it by had China opened on I the think same Lucas weekend. Lucas was right. I'll squash, squash you like a bug. Squash, <laughs> like a bug. Squash you like a bug. Best. So anyway, what did what did you think? I mean, well, the one thing that I found interesting also is that you know, Hunger Games is has made about five hundred million, 
Uh, Star Wars already did right. that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yeah. And within within yeah. a couple of days, it already did that. And I do think, because listening to Bob Iger, because like, as you always say, you worship at the altar of George Lucas. George Lucas I'm worshiping at the altar of Bob Iger. From what this guy has done, listening to him speak this morning on Bloomberg, and and watch like the fact that he says that the projections are going to be 247. I'm pretty sure it's going to be 247. And when you look at what that movie has accomplished and all the records that it has, smashed, it could go as high as 247. Yeah. Now, for me, I and being the Star Wars guy that I am, I was the I was the, the one of the biggest doubters. I didn't even know it was going to cross 200 million because of being it being in December and you know Christmas time. Uh, I was beyond wrong on that. You were super close. If it turns out to be 247 here, and I think that everything that this movie has done, and I think that the drop off next week is going to be maybe even smaller than we thought because we had spoken about a lot of people didn't get tickets opening weekend and yeah. and are waiting for the rush. I, I'm very curious to see what week two is going to be like. But yeah, Road Chip to me I think is a more bigger surprise to me than Sisters because Road Chip is one like I think that when I, I took my my daughter to see it, that's why I look like I'm 87 years old right now. <laughs> I have to endure it. But it, but I took my daughter to see it, and there were a lot of kids in there, younger kids that maybe can't see Star Wars yet. Um, but that I'm gr- glad Creed's hanging in there for sure. That that to me is it's it's just it's kind of doing not the same type of business what Kingsman did. But they just started doing a new marketing push for Creed as well. Yeah. And do you notice they're doing a secondary push right now to get more people to it because it deserves to have an it, it audience. It does, and the fact, I, I like that that it's sticking in there in in number five. So um, this was a really big weekend for Star Wars fans, for movie fans in general. And I think something interesting that Bob Iger said was they saw a spike. In, I think the next day, in, as far as movie tickets went, because when they when they originally sold all these tickets, they saw a big increase in guys. There a lot a lot of men were going to see Star Wars, but then when the word starts to spread about Daisy Ridley, and uh, then more women started, they saw their women demographic go up as far as ticket. Share. So I think to me that is going to be something really big that continues throughout the run of Force Awakens. Yeah, and that's JJ. He's one of the principal guys. Who was like, I, 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 he really pushed the to have a, a female be the lead. Yeah, he said that's really important to to do this new Star Wars trilogy. I think that's the way to go. She was so good, man. She was amazing. Man. So here's something really interesting and scary. It's interesting and scary to keep in mind. Unlike Jurassic World. When it came out, its opening weekend box office surprised everybody, including uh, Colin Trevorrow, including all the people you knew. Nobody expected Jurassic World to have the opening weekend right, that right, did. Right. Nobody. So what you had was you had everybody who wanted to see it just went to the theater. There was a new dynamic at play here with movie going this weekend because of how many people did not go just assuming they couldn't get tickets. I mean, there were, I know tons of people, you know people, you, we all know people who like wanted to see Star Wars this weekend, but did not because they operated on the assumption you ain't going to be able to get near a movie theater this weekend. I Because Dennis had had this one conversation with somebody at the theater, I went and talked to, to some of the guys over at the uh, AMC Burbank 16, the people who worked there, and they said, there are still lots of our screenings are not sold out. But what you have is, because the weather hasn't been great here for, for Los Angeles, um, it's, it's been okay, but you know, people, generally speaking, they don't want to go and stand in line for three hours, and they didn't want to go to the movie theater to try to buy tickets because they assumed it would be sold out. So they said, I mean, all of our theaters are, are pretty much full, but almost all of our screenings still have some seats available. What we don't have any seats available for is the one theater they have that has pre-assigned seating. That one sold out like throughout the weekend, every single screening into the week because people didn't have to wonder if they were going to get tickets. Right. They didn't have to wonder where their seats were going to be. And the, I was talking to one of the guys over at the Burbank 16. They said, if all of our theaters were pre-assigned seating and people could pre-buy their seat and pre-select their seat, he said the amount of business, we would have probably had about 30% more business. Yeah. Think about that. Think about the number of people who went to go see Star Wars and how much more it might have been. It's true. This is a crazy phenomenon. Well, look at the repeat viewings as well, too. We had always talked about this. Even on Jedi Council, right. it depends. The amount of money this movie's going to make is how good it was. And I think for it, it has gone from good to a lot of people's minds to great to a lot of people's minds as well, too. And not a lot of, not a lot of uh, oh, that was terrible. I haven't heard terrible. A couple heard, of weirdos. I've heard, yeah. weird, but I've heard some people saying, like, oh, disappointed. 
fine, but that's not terrible. And so right, we're at a good and a great level from a lot of people. And I know people that have seen it three to four right. times already. I'm going to see it three to four times. Yeah. And we're only we're not even at a week one. So once we get to once more people are seeing it for I, and I keep getting tweets, I'm going to go see it a fifth and a sixth and a seventh time. That's going to continue to happen with the hardcore fans and brand new fans that are coming in too. that there are people you got to remember the new generation that is learning about Star Wars now are being introduced to Star Wars through this movie. They're going to see it a bunch more times. Remember when we were younger and we were telling our our parents, I gotta see it again. How many times did you see the original one? Yeah, so yeah, many th times. So many times. And as a kid, if this is the first time, I it was the coolest thing ever. I saw it for a second time yesterday. I was walking out and I saw these two little kids. They must have been like, I don't know, eight years old. And they're like, well, wait a minute. You think there'll be a 10, an 11, and then a 12? Um, I gotta see this one again because uh -huh. and you hear these two kids talking. I'm like, that, that's awesome. That's exactly what you want. Those kids, those two kids I saw are going to be seeing that movie a ton of times. Yeah. Now, one, one of the things, this is gonna sound weird. This is gonna sound weird. Um, we had talked about on our view, you, me, and Tiff, we talked about this on Jedi Council, actually, about does Star Wars The Force Awakens have a chance to catch Avatar for the all-time record? Yeah. These numbers actually convince me even more that it will not. It won't catch it. Um, because if, if you look at it this way, I mean, who knows what will happen? I mean, crazier things have happened. It might. I hope it kind of does. But if you look at it, um, Star Wars The Force Awakens has just beat... Jurassic World's opening weekend box office record by 15%. By 15% it beat it by. So if you extrapolate that, uh, I think Jurassic World ended up with somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.7 billion worldwide. So if you extrapolate that 15% bigger in the long term and that maintains long term, then you're looking at The Force Awakens making two to 2.1 billion. Can it pick up that much more steam to add another 30% on top of that 15% and cross the $3 billion line to beat Avatar? I still think that's a dubious proposition. I still, I still don't think it will. I think it has a real chance to catch Titanic for number two, but I still don't think it's going to catch Avatar because to me the math doesn't line up at this point unless a new phenomenon comes. But you're still feeling pretty confident that it does have a real shot at catching Avatar. 100%. Uh, 100%. 100%. Like, you're going to be shocked if now it doesn't catch Avatar. I, at, at, one point, at one point I was like, I think it could. I think it's going to do it because I get the math. But the difference is Jurassic World is not Star Wars. I said, no, this is uh, true. And it doesn't have that repeat no, viewing. No, because We've everybody, already, all of us have already seen it twice. Yeah. And we're looking forward to seeing it a third Did time. Did you hear of anyone that saw Jurassic World two or three times the opening weekend? Nope. No. And, and the thing, but and, I did for Avengers. And Avengers, Avengers has comparable numbers it, to Jurassic World. It does. World. Avengers, I think, is a, is, a, is a comparison for sure. But I think that also Star Wars... And the Avengers did phenomenal business. But I think Star Wars, again, for what... And Dennis said it earlier, too, because it's got this thing of people going... It's not. It, it's such a different feel from the prequels. It's just so different that it takes you back to the original trilogy. That it's you're recapturing that kind. Of, it is recapturing that magic again. And I think that's why it's going to do all this repeat business. And jumping back to what we just said before, not everyone has seen it yet. In that second week, you're going to see I, I, the drop off is really what I'm, I'm curious about. So I want to see what that second week is like. If we get like a really big, let's say this, the final numbers for this weekend is like two forty five, right? Sure. And next week. Let's say it makes 150 to 160 next week. Right? <sighs> if that does that, if yeah. it does that, then I think we have a good shot. Well, I, I look. I said this before. I'll say it again. I believe the second week drop off is going to be around the 30 percent range. I think it's going to be around the 30 percent range. I think it is more than realistic to expect that we're going to see a second weekend. Wrap your head. How many movie theaters? How many? Studios would kill to have a movie open with a hundred and fifty million dollar weekend. Everyone, I'm thinking Star Wars: The Force Awakens is going to have a second week, and you still don't even with that. and even with that, you don't think it can catch up. Three Avatar. billion is a really China hasn't seen big, it yet. I know, but you're talking China. Maybe will add like ninety to hundred million dollars to the box office. Three billion is a really there's we're talking about you think only 100 million in china put it this way for, at all I, yeah i think i really? think maybe, maybe around 100 maybe at the most 150 i think the record right now in china is like a 90 million dollar thing is, is, is the current record okay. but i mean think about it this way only i think correct me if i'm wrong correct me if i'm wrong i, I believe only like 15 movies in history maybe 17 or 18 have made one billion dollars worldwide, right? That's 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 all it's ever happened. Right. Like that many times has any movie made one billion dollars? We're talking about taking the biggest movie of the the year 
and adding that billion dollars on top of it. Right. It's it would be amazing. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say I will, you know, uh, you, you know, I'll I'll shave my head or dye my hair pink if it if it did. I think it, it's certainly within the realm of it's feasible. Yeah. I it's just Three billion, man, is a really big number. I think it's more than possible to do. When you think about Transformers 4 broke a billion, and that's a piece of garbage. garbage. I mean, but that just had the, a lot of people going to see it because they're selling toys. Right. Now, Star Wars is also selling toys, but it's actually a really fun film. And word of mouth right now is people are not only wanting to see it a second time, but a third time and bringing their friends. So it's going to, it has that phenomena that the original 1977 Star Wars has, where it's actually bringing people back into the theaters, where nowadays we live in a world where we can see any movie we want and are on our own like giant screen television at home. And we have streaming Netflix, we have all this other, we have all these choices and this is a film that's dragging people back right. to the theater because it's a theatrical experience and that's and it's a really fun film. I mean, there's a couple people who are complaining about it, but I- Minority you know, though. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, honestly, it's really like a really fun, exciting film to see in the theater. You know what it also is too, going back to let's say Jurassic World and The Avengers, the two examples from <coughs> earlier, both summer movies. Um, both had other big summer movies start to chip at it after a mm -hmm. bit. It, besides Kung, Kung Fu Panda 3 and a couple other things, there's not a lot that's going to be chipping at right. Star Wars until Batman vs. Superman. There'll be other things that, that can certainly take money away from it, but not at the impact of, say, a summer yeah, movie Deadpool. does. Deadpool. There's a couple of good February, De but even Deadpool. that's a long way but that's, away. That's, that's, that's February. A that's February. I'm away. saying up until, let's say, Deadpool. Okay, so Deadpool, even because it's a rated R film as well, too, they'll probably and, and the same, same audience, for sure. But up until that point, there's not a lot that's going to be really taking so much away from it, because if you have the Avengers and, and Jurassic World, I don't remember what came out right after those movies, but I'm sure it was at least the movie that did anywhere from 50, 60, 70 million opening weekend, and that'll start to chip. So I think that that's why this December, and it's also when you look at Avatar and Titanic, both movies that came out December, January, and had that time to build, because both Avatar and Titanic didn't open anywhere close to this. They had enough time to really Oh, they keep... both opened sub-100 million. Right, they didn't right. even crack 100 like, million. Throughout your head around, Avatar opened to less than 100 million. I think both it opened like 75, movies. 77 right. million dollars. Both three-hour movies, both in 3D, and this movie's in 3D as well. And I'll tell you, I saw it, I'm not a big 3D fan, but I saw this movie in 3D, and I was surprised how much I enjoyed it in 3D. Yeah, it was really I was funny. kind of dreading watching it in 3D, because Same I didn't here. think it was necessary. See, the one thing you raise about, and we've talked about this before, is about the fact that, you know, this is an opening in the summer, so it doesn't have, it's not gonna have the same competition around, surrounding it. That is the one exception to this, because when I think about all the other things we've talked about, it's a theatrical experience, it's getting people back into the theater, it's people going back to watch it five, six, seven, eight times. Right. That was Avengers. I mean, that really was the Avengers right. when, when the Avengers first came out. And Avengers ended with like 1.6 billion. We're talking about coming close to doubling what the Avengers did. I, I To me, it is still, I hope it happens. How much yeah. did it make worldwide this weekend? Over 500, Almost 500 million. Almost so 500 million. Imagine right. next weekend it's 300 and the following weekend it's 300. That, we're gonna, it's going to crack 1 billion. It's going to crack 1 billion before the end of what's this the year. What's the fastest movie to ever make 1 billion? That's three weeks. What's the fastest movie to ever make That's a very good question. I don't know. That's a, that's, yeah. It will be this. That's, that's this the will question. be the fastest what, to hit a billion. If you guys are out doing research, what's the fastest movie to hit 1 billion? What I'm just saying, if it hits a billion before the end of this year, it's got all of January to soak up that other billion and a half. I think it's doable. But remember, yeah. by that point, then we're, we're getting into only repeat viewings of that. Because like, after we cross three or four weeks, now we're into things where everybody's seen it, right. who's going to go see it. We'll see what that drop off is. This is going to get really, really interesting. This is a phenomenon. And the, you know, it's funny. I had one people, why are you guys talking so much about Star Wars lately? It's like, that's like asking ESPN during Super Bowl week, why are you talking so much about football right now? <laughs> this is the, business-wise, this is the yeah. biggest thing we've ever seen happen in the movie business. It is an incredible phenomenon that's happening right now and now we're less than a year away from star wars rogue one so just wrap your heads around that jurassic world did it in 10 days is what they're saying jurassic did it in 10 days star wars will beat that yeah star wars will absolutely beat that hey guys if you like this clip click here to watch the entire episode also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at collider